Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, October 13th, 2016. Here's a quick look at what's coming up tonight. More WikiLeaks bombshells crash through the matrix and expose Hillary Clinton. This time, as Secretary of State, Hillary admits that the government of Saudi Arabia was supporting ISIS. So why did she accept all that money from the Saudi government? And how does the latest WikiLeaks data dump relate to the 28 pages? I'll give you a hint. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has bankrolled Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, ISIS, and now Hillary Clinton. The Hillary Clinton documents released today by WikiLeaks make more clear than ever just how much is at stake in this election. So much corruption. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We begin this evening with a bombshell WikiLeaks release that links the government of Saudi Arabia with logistic and financial support to ISIS. And get this, the newly disclosed information did not come from a whistleblower or an arms dealer. No, this time it came from a leaked email from Hillary Clinton. Here is now another from the latest release of hacked emails from WikiLeaks. In a private email exchange between Clinton and campaign manager John Podesta back in 2014, Clinton acknowledges Saudi Arabia and Qatar were providing financial and logistical support to the Islamic State. Hillary Clinton says that the governments of these two countries are funding ISIS. We need to use our diplomatic and more traditional intelligence assets to bring pressure on the governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which are providing clandestine financial and logistic support to ISIL and other radical Sunni groups in the region. Needless to say, this is the very same Saudi Arabia and Qatar who have donated uh, north of $30 million to the Clinton Foundation and the very same Saudi Arabia, which struck a record-breaking arms deal with the United States when Hillary Clinton was in charge of the Department of State. Were the governments funding other radical Sunni groups in the region absolutely and Hillary Clinton should know that very well because they included funding of radical groups in Libya uh, before and after the overthrow of Gaddafi that contributed to the destabilization there ultimately leading to the tragedy in Benghazi on September the 11th 2012 we came we saw <laughs> he died <laughs> the Hillary Clinton documents released today by WikiLeaks make more clear than ever just how much is at stake in this election. So much corruption. This is amazing. Check it out. Here are some of the details. The WikiLeaks documents include an email from Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State at the time, to John Podesta, who is now her campaign chairman. And Hillary says in the email exchange that the governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia are providing financial and logistic support to ISIL terrorists and other radical Sunni groups in the region. Wow. But wait a minute. If these governments are supporting terrorism, why the hell would Hillary Clinton accept money from them? Well, they don't call her crooked Hillary for nothing. And it's no secret that the government of Saudi Arabia is also bankrolling Hillary's presidential campaign. Yes, I know it's illegal. Foreign countries are not allowed to influence the outcome of U.S. elections. But if you haven't figured it out by now, Hillary Clinton is above the law. And she is the ultimate globalist puppet candidate. And she's working for the establishment. And she will accept money from anybody. And not only are the Saudis supporting ISIS... They also funded and trained the 9-11 hijackers. I bet you didn't hear that on CNN, did you? Google search the 28 pages. It finally proves without a doubt that the 9-11 conspiracy theorists were right all along. And the redacted 28 pages from the 9-11 report are now declassified. Well, most of it anyway. 15 of the 19 hijackers were indeed from Saudi Arabia. 
and they were in contact with members of the Saudi government, including the Saudi royal family who assisted the 9-11 hijackers. This is an act of war. FBI sources confirm in the 28 pages that the government of Saudi Arabia had connections to Al-Qaeda. In fact, we now know that Prince Bandar, the Saudi ambassador to the U.S., well, his name came up multiple times in the 28 pages, including a money transfer of $130,000 from Prince Bandar's family checking account directly to one of the hijackers, Saudi handlers in San Diego. So there you go. We have a direct link from Prince Bandar to the 9-11 Hijackers, I think that might be newsworthy, don't you? And don't forget, it was George W. Bush who wanted the 28 pages kept secret. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Every nation, in every region, now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. You know, it was shortly after the attacks on September 11th that the U.S. government grounded all flights coming in and out of the continental United States. Nobody was allowed to fly unless, of course, you happen to be a member of the Saudi royal family or the bin Laden family because they were evacuated immediately and allowed to escape before they could be questioned by authorities. And during that same time, President George W. Bush and Prince Bandar, well, they were hanging out together on the White House balcony smoking cigars. I tell you what, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall during that moment in history. You know, they used to call Prince Bandar, Bandar Bush, because of his close relationship to the Bush family. I mean, they used to vacation together. And the Bush White House, they didn't want anybody to find out that their buddies in Saudi Arabia helped carry out 9-11. Bush wants it kept secret. Obama certainly isn't going to do anything about it. And now that we know that Hillary Clinton is all aware of all this, well, she's not going to do anything about it either, as long as the Saudis keep giving her money. And of course, they were rewarded just like everyone else who contributes money to the Clinton Foundation. The biggest arms deal in Saudi Arabia's history happened shortly after donating millions of dollars to Hillary. So when you think about it, the people who were responsible for this are now funding Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. It's a bold statement, but Hillary and Obama created and manage ISIS, and they will do anything to distract the public's awareness of this undeniable fact, a fact born of the globalist's insatiable need to create an enemy and control both sides of endless wars and social engineering that add to the New World Order's trillion-dollar treasure chest. But times are changing, and the true enemy of humanity has been exposed. WikiLeaks have been dropping the cannon fodder for the past few days, and among the insults of religious leaders and minorities and communications that could harm national security and a revelation that Bill Clinton was given a million dollar birthday check from Qatar for pay to play access in Haiti. At the top of that heap, damning evidence that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama with the aid of Saudi Arabia and Qatar gave financial and logistical support to the Islamic State and other extremist Sunni groups. The Daily Caller reported Clinton sent the email on August 17th, 2014 to Podesta. It was an eight-point plan to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Clinton's email said that the United States should support Kurdish forces on the ground with U.S. military advisors and avoid the use of a conventional ground operation. The email reads, while this military paramilitary operation is moving forward, we need to use our diplomatic and more traditional intelligence assets to bring pressure on the governments of Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which are providing clandestine financial and logistics support 
to ISIL and other radical Sunni groups in the region. The key phrase being clandestine financial and logistical support. As usual, the United States is funding both sides of the war, just like Henry Ford, Prescott, Bush, IBM, and AT&T aided Hitler, just as the CIA backed the Muslim Brotherhood during the Cold War and later funded and created Osama bin Laden. As Counterpunch wrote, former British Foreign Secretary Robin Cook told the House of Commons that Al-Qaeda was unquestionably a product of Western intelligence agencies. Mr. Cook explained that Al-Qaeda, which literally means an abbreviation of the database in Arabic, was originally the computer database of the thousands of Islamic extremists who were trained by the CIA and funded by the Saudis in order to defeat the Russians in Afghanistan. Adding more fuel to the Clinton campaign funeral pyre, Mark Turi, an American arms dealer accused by the DOJ of violating the Arms Export Control Act and lying to the state Department on official applications claimed high-level contacts inside and outside the U.S. government requested he explore options to arm opposition fighters as they tried to overthrow Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi. Among the documents and emails he claimed to possess are exchanges with members of Congress as well as with high-ranking members of the military and State Department employees. Meanwhile, as our criminal government continues to side with the powers that fuel life ISIS. A broken ceasefire in Syria creates a growing divide that Secretary of State John Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov will attempt to mend on Saturday in Switzerland. Americans voting for president on November 8th must realize that they are voting for peace on planet Earth if they vote for Trump. But if they vote for Hillary, it's war. Widespread panic is consuming Russia. After holding a nuclear evacuation drill involving 40 million people, Russia is calling all of its citizens living abroad to return home. Russian military leaders are complaining that thousands of ISIS fighters are being allowed to leave Iraq's terror hub in Mosul to join the fight in Syria. As Russia flexes its military muscle in the Middle East by holding joint paratrooper exercises from October 15th through the 26th with Egypt in the coastal city of El Alamein. The globalists are behaving like a cornered dog, and as the pressure ramps up on the criminal ruling elite that have hijacked our republic, here's hoping they will lay down to their true master, the will of the American people. John Bound for Infowars.com. Leanne McAdoo joins us now for more on the Clinton-Saudi connection. And we now know that 20% of Hillary Clinton's campaign money comes from Saudi Arabia, illegally laundered through the Clinton Foundation. And now these latest WikiLeaks documents proves once and for all that Hillary Clinton knew full well that Saudi Arabia is funding ISIS. What else have you learned? Absolutely. I mean, can you even imagine what's contained in those missing 33,000 emails? I mean, hopefully we'll oh, find out soon. Just incredible because of all, all this stuff is just coming from one person, John Podesta. So we know Hillary says Saudi Arabia and Qatar are funding ISIS. She's well aware that these are the number one uh, fun funders of terror across the world, yet she made it a top priority as Secretary of State to make sure that weapons transfers to Saudi Arabia was of paramount importance. In fact, the Obama administration has sold more weapons to Saudi Arabia than all of the former presidents in our 71 year exactly. relationship. Exactly, and, and this is while Hillary was a secretary of state. This exactly. is blood money. Exactly. What Donald Trump calls blood money, pay to play. She armed Saudi Arabia to the teeth. Mm -hmm. OK, but now this is why a WikiLeaks actually just tweeted this out today, that this is one of their favorite pairings in this Podesta leak is the fact that Hillary knew Saudi Arabia and Qatar funding ISIS. And then her husband, Bill Clinton, accepted a one million dollar birthday check from <laughs> Qatar. They said, hey, you know, we're going to be in the same area. We'd really love to just get five minutes of his time so we can give him his birthday check, a million dollars. So this was apparently a check well, for and Just think about that. I want everybody to think about that for a minute. <laughs> so the government of Saudi Arabia gives Bill Clinton a million dollars for a speaking engagement. Hillary Clinton gets a lot of money just to go out there and speak, and they expect nothing in return. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, nothing in return. We just love you so much. I mean, what kind of key information are they sharing at these speeches that it costs a million dollars and, and then they have to say, can we just have five minutes of your time, Bill, so we can give you this check? Mm -hmm. I mean, and here's the thing, and we've uh, kind of did a little research on this back in 2015, just ISIS versus Saudi Arabia. They are, um, they are exporting this 
insane ideology. And if Islamic State put out their punishment list, the here's our laws, if you break them, here is the punishment. It's the exact same thing in Saudi Arabia. So they, it's the same exact ideology. They're not different at all. And they are still one of the main exporters of terrorism. They have bankrolled Al Qaeda, the Taliban, ISIS, um, and it goes on and on. But and Hillary it, Clinton's a champion for women. Exactly. And liberals and gay rights. Right. I don't understand. And of of course, Qatar is where uh, raping women is legal, mm -hmm. right? And so, I mean, that, these are things, that's why this rampant hypocrisy has to be pointed out. That here she's saying that she's all for gun control, you know, peace in the Middle East, yet she is making it a paramount to sell them weapons that the EU has actually put um, an embargo on selling Saudi Arabia weapons because they might be implicated in war crimes in Yemen. Mm -hmm. Yet. Hillary Clinton, via the Clinton Foundation, via these weapons transfers in Benghazi, is able to funnel them the weapons that have been embargoed. We're not supposed to be giving them weapons. Meanwhile, Rand Paul did say that Hillary Clinton could get five years in prison for lying to Congress about this Syrian weapons transfer. And now we know it's coming out that this arms dealer, that the DOJ just all of a sudden dropped the case because it was going to take her down with him. He confirms that... That's what was happening, this weapons. Well, case. no wonder she wants Julian Assange to be hit with a drone strike. Yeah. Because this information will not only stop her from becoming president, it'll also send her ass to prison. The Hillary Clinton documents released today by WikiLeaks make more clear than ever just how much is at stake in this election. So much corruption. This election will determine whether we remain a free country in the truest sense of the word, or we become a corrupt banana republic controlled by large donors and foreign governments. Should have had an election. They didn't have an election. That system is set up so that the crooked politicians can make sure they get somebody in that's not, you know, part of what we're doing. This is a movement, folks. I'm self-funding my campaign. They hate it. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Owen Schroyer with you, and I am joined by science fiction authors T.S. Pettibone. They're actually identical twins. And you guys have recently decided to put your careers writing books on hold in order to campaign, essentially, on social media for Donald Trump. Tell me about that decision. Well, essentially, we've been watching this election extremely closely from the very beginning. And we've been on the Trump train since the very beginning as well. And we've just been watching it escalate and get worse and worse and worse. And we've been wanting to speak out for a while. And just eventually we kind of snapped and just said, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if it costs us our career or whatever. We just wanted to stand up and speak what we believe, you know, because we've been in a very liberal um, industry for a while without being able to speak what we believe. So we just kind of went for it and didn't look back, haven't yet. And we're very happy with what we've done. Now, is this more because you like Donald Trump that much or because you think that this election is so pivotal and important? Well, it's actually both, but we do think that this election is very important. Um, Hillary Clinton is a globalist and Donald Trump's a nationalist. We think that this election will decide a lot. Um, so and we think it will be devastating if Hillary Clinton wins. Um, we're already seeing our freedoms, you know, be taken away right, left and center. And so um, like it basically came down to books don't matter. Writing won't matter. Nothing will matter if um, our country continues on the course that, you know, it's been going on. So, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good point, and I think a lot of people don't understand that, and we go about our daily routines and everything, and we just take for granted how fragile our, our lives might actually be, so that's an interesting point. Now, do you guys feel, you talked about how there's liberal bias in your industry. I see that in our industry all the time. I'm sure you do as well, but enlighten our audience. What is kind of the bias that you've seen in your industry of being an author? <clears throat> Well, for example, I mean, many of the agents have wish lists of things they'd like to see in books. And so if you're, if you're writing according to the narrative, then you are much more likely to be published. So 
You know, do you want to add? Yes. So um, she means writing accord according to the politically correct narrative. Yeah. So if you um, have very conservative ideals, your book probably won't get published. Um, at least in, we're talking about the young adult industry because that's really all that we've had experience in. Uh, so like she said, they sort of have a preset um, a list of things that they want included in books. And we've, we've been to many conferences. We've seen all these agents and publishers on these panels sort of um, uh, speaking about this, how we want this to be published uh, this year or this to be published, you know, next month. And so it's very difficult to compete in that industry when they don't really want anything but the politically correct narrative. So that was pretty uh, disappointing for us. So did you actually experience that, trying to get your book published, Hatred Day, Volume 1, which is kind of a depiction of how you see the New World Order um, being unleashed on humanity and what that future looks like? Did you experience any of that firsthand? Okay, so actually what happened was, um, for many years our writing, we didn't realize, but we were automatically kind of censoring ourselves. Because we've been in this industry so long, we didn't quite make the connection until about a year ago, where we weren't completely censored, but a lot of things we were like, oh, we probably shouldn't bring that up because it's a sensitive subject. So um, throughout all these years of writing, we were just censoring ourselves, and it got to a point where we were saying, we, uh, we want to write what we believe, and we don't want to um, conform to their ideals and principles just to get published. So the way that we call it the new global union, the way it's depicted in Hatred Day, is fairly um, uh, kind of how we imagine the new, uh, the new world order to be. And it will progress as the series goes on. But for now, it's kind of subtle. It's very tame in book one. But now that we've just decided to, um, you know, write what we believe and be very blunt about it, as the series goes on, our, um, what we see uh, will be very blatant. So that's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that we've self-published. Yeah. Do you guys feel like you're risking your career as authors being so public for your endorsements of Trump? Oh, sure. I mean, since we came out for Trump, it's been a little over a week. Yeah. Uh, we've been unfollowed by many of the, you know, YouTuber, the bloggers on YouTube uh, and industry contacts that we've made over the years. And so we can just see the intolerance, you know, of our beliefs already. And I mean, you know, it's OK, but we, we think it's worth it. We, we, we want to stand up for what we believe in. It's, it's no life to live being censored, you know. TSPettibone.com. Their book is Hatred Day, Volume 1. I imagine you're planning on writing um, more of these books, but right now you've put that on hold to endorse Donald Trump. And it seems to me, based on the videos you've done, it's, it's even motivated by how sick and disgusting Hillary Clinton is and the fact that she could even be a presidential candidate. That shocked you so much you feel like you had to report on it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's incredible how biased the mainstream media is. Absolutely incredible. The things that she has done in relation to Donald Trump, there is just no contest. But no one reports on it. And you, you can just see the bias clear as day, especially if you read any alternative um, medias. Uh, so, yes, we, we've seen it. And we're just we're trying to point out things that we've noticed that, you know, maybe we haven't seen, you know, reported on somewhere else or just in our own words. And hopefully since we're, you know, a bit younger, we'll appeal to a younger audience. And that's our goal, just to get as many people to wake up before election day, because it's coming fast. And you guys also, um, being women, you know, you're told that you shouldn't support Trump, that he hates women. What is a message you would have for other young women out there who believe that Donald Trump hates women and they shouldn't vote for him? Well, so obviously the Trump tape that came out, we, we, don't, um, we don't approve, obviously, of what he said. It was wrong. But I think, like we said, it's a disproportionate reaction um, what we've seen in the mainstream media. So as a woman, we would say Hillary Clinton is not for women. Like, um, I think that one comment Trump has made has been taken um, to and put out there to say that Trump hates women when Hillary Clinton has an entire track record mm -hmm. of um, intimidating and um, uh, just completely, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my words right, but just... Um, we see um, her intimidating Bill Clinton's um, alleged rape victims. Uh, we see her um, flip-flopping on tons of issues um, where she's trying to appease people nowadays when she didn't agree with gay marriage before. We see a lot of this 
And from Hillary Clinton, the one thing that we can take away is that she'll say anything to get elected and that she doesn't care about women. She doesn't care about men. She only cares about uh, herself. Yes. So. To add to that, actually, it's kind of what we pointed out in the video where we came out for Trump is Hillary is all words. Yeah. And if you look at her actions, they're complete, you know, in conflict with her with her words. So a lot of what she's saying is lying, but it seems like people are only responding to what she's saying. They're not looking at what she's done. And in the Podesta emails that have leaked, you can see, you know, all the things that she said or people have said that she said yeah. and the things she's done. And they're, they're very, very, very terrifying. <laughs> In your last video, you talked about the mainstream news and Hillary Clinton wanted to keep you ignorant. Are you buying any of the polls that say Hillary Clinton is in lead coming out of the mainstream no, news? No, no way. way. No way. No way. Uh, frankly, we don't trust anything the mainstream media says. I mean, it, it's all it's all bias. It's not objective anymore. And that's why we've res resorted to reading alternative media. And for many years now, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you were actually telling me that we were talking about off air how you've been kind of awake to the alternative media for a while now, but you've decided to enter it yourself, if you will. And having said that, to close out this interview, you've done a couple videos, you've, you've started to go into the political nature, you've gotten some new fans. Are you having fun? Maybe there's some political uh, narrative future for you here in the future? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, we, we have a lot of ideas for videos, so this could go on for a while. Yeah. yeah, we're just kind of putting the ones that we think are more important. We're working on them right now and then eventually because we have a master list already of videos that we'd like to do. So you guys might be at this uh, for longer past just the election then. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now that we're out, we're out. And yeah. we're going to just say everything we want to say and make our points. One thing I'd like to note is that um, we've been in the writing industry for how many years? Um, it's ten, been about, about 10 years. And the writing industry, we have not seen nearly as much um, of a welcoming reaction um, in the writing industry, which we're in for 10 years, as just one week being in the um, alternative media, so to speak. They've been so welcoming, the community is so kind, and um, it's just been a really great experience. So one week compared to one or 10 years, it's been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Science fiction and fantasy authors T.S. Pettibone. Follow them on Twitter at Brit Pettibone, tspettibone.com for all their work. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us and for sticking up for Donald Trump. I mean, she is an abject, psychopathic demon from hell that as soon as she gets into power is going to try to destroy the planet. She's worked like a demon, as you know, as Secretary of State. And we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> what difference at this point does it make? And there's only one candidate in this race who understands that democracy in a big, diverse country doesn't work if you constantly demonize each other. De demonize each other. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. And I mean that literally, by the way. There, I, I, was, I was reading the other day, there, there's a, a guy on the radio who apparently Trump's on his show frequently. He said, me and Hillary are demons. I'm telling you, she is a demon. This is biblical. She's going to launch a nuclear war. Said we smell like sulfur. Ain't that something? Now, I mean, come on, people. You can't wash that evil off, man. I'm not kidding. People say, they say, the, uh, uh, folks, I've been told this by high up folks. They say, listen, Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur. I never said this because the media go crazy with it, but I've, I've talked to people that are in protective details. I mean, they're scared of it. And they say, listen, she's a freaking demon and she stinks and so does Obama. And I go, like what? Sulfur. They smell like hell. On November 8th, the arrogance of Washington, D.C. will come face to face with the righteous verdict of the American voter. It's about time. So much of what he's just said is not right, but he gets to run his campaign any way he chooses.
It's said by many in the media that the New York Times is the most prestigious outlet in the world. They certainly were respected 50, 60 years ago, but they are one of the most discredited outlets in the world now. But they are still the main vehicle with the Washington Post competing in second place for establishment disinformation. The special interests that have captured this nation are on record running the New York Times. And there have been four different waves of confirmed WikiLeaks just the last few years where we have Hillary Clinton particularly giving orders to the New York Times. They go to her before they even run stories. Uh, she controls what news they put out, not just on her, the Democratic Party, but on many other issues. So I'll hand this to Hillary. When you get into the emails and stuff, she actually is running the show and is trying to establish an authoritarian system in this country. Now, this is my response to Hillary and to the combine she represents and to the New York Times, as well as Obama, who's been attacking me and basically implying that I'm a crazy person. I come on air with a lot of energy, and I am almost hysterical at times because I read the documents, I read the statements about the TPP, openly admitting world government. Uh, Hillary's own emails have come out saying she wants to ban guns via executive order, but that's in the news in major papers saying ban the Second Amendment. They just live in this world where they deny all this is going on, like saying Obamacare is free or you can keep your doctor, and then they go on Charlie Rose and laugh at us. Jason, I think I Love it wrote the line about um, if you like your insurance, you can keep it. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's still true. No. Yeah. But so you can call me a conspiracy theorist all day long. You try to use me as the poster boy to say, look, people that cover these issues aren't credible. I'm the poster boy that got all this information out. I'm the person that did it in a theatrical way, but always told the truth to break through to the public who was in a coma. And that's in the new WikiLeaks as well. Keep them dumbed down, keep them in the dark, keep them disinterested, uh, keep them distracted, keep them diverted. Thank God they're not paying attention like Gruber famously said about Obamacare. When I read the latest New York Times article today, I could spend weeks just looking at the disinformation, the spinning, uh, the taking out of context to try to discredit myself, Donald Trump, and populist movements worldwide. And I understand why. The New York Times represents global corporatism, a modern form of anti-free market crony capitalism that is the modern colonialism. And they're using third world populations to basically wage economic warfare now on the first world and bring both down. And they write white papers about this. Separately, when I was reading the story, I saw another link to an article saying that Donald Trump is panicking because he's losing the race and claiming there's election fraud. Again, you illustrate your hypocrisy and wonder why you're basically bankrupt if you didn't have a foreign Mexican owner. And that's that the federal government says the Russians are hacking the election and taking it over, so they're federalizing it. This weeks after I came out two months ago and said Homeland Security is planning to federalize it to steal it from Trump because he's really 10 to 15 points ahead. Then the president comes out and says, I'm crazy that the feds aren't involved in elections, but then takes them over two and a half, three weeks later. And it's, it's, it's these contradictions on every point. You're announcing world government. You're announcing you want our guns. You're announcing that the family unit's bad. It's in white papers and textbooks that they're trying to get rid of the nuclear family to lower population numbers and promoting homosexuality. I'm not making a judgment of homosexuality. I'm a libertarian, for God's sakes. It's that you're saying you're attacking the family. Don't attack gays, but don't attack the family. That's all I'm saying. But to address a few of the points, they act like I'm a kook for saying the government wants to take our guns, and I went on Piers Morgan and said 1776 will commence again if you try to take them. And then they go, oh my God, he warns of the end of humanity because of nuclear weapons and GMOs and human-animal hybrids. I mean, top scientists across the board, major institutions say the planet's in more danger of nuclear war or biological Armageddon than we've ever been. But again, they make it look kooky and weird to be concerned. I'm a father of three. I'm concerned about our mainstream media waging war on independent press and Obama and the Republicans working with them going after whistleblowers. I talked about NSA spying with specifics with whistleblowers 20 years ago. The truth is people that have attached their wagon to this corrupt establishment are on the wrong side of history. I've been right. I've told the truth. Infowars.com has been a trailblazing institution that's grassroots. We're not all hoity-toity and polished from teleprompters like you are. But even when I'm on the road in a hotel room visiting family, 
I'm ready to come in and hit back and take action because I know the people deserve the truth and I believe in humanity and I want to turn the tide. The truth is Donald Trump is a patriot as well. The truth is you guys are crucifying him for doing one one hundredth what Bill and Hillary Clinton have done. But let me address just one more of the other points they raised that I could say has some legitimacy. And that's the criticism that I'm seeing Hillary and Obama are literal, actual demons. Now, to be specific, I'm not saying they're from the pit of hell. I can see how that comes off, and it's a legitimate criticism. I don't believe they actually, again, float around like Ghostbusters, like Slimer or something, and are from a literal hell. But in a allegory way, they might as well be demons from hell. Hillary funding jihadis and ISIS on record all over the world, killing Christians, supporting radical Islam that oppresses women, uh, doing all the horrible things she's done, treating her staff horribly, uh, saying, I came, I saw Gaddafi died, destabilizing Africa, uh, selling tainted blood. Uh, look at that in the 80s and 90s out of Arkansas when they were basically co-governors and knowing it had HIV in it. I mean, the crimes of the Clinton are legion. These are nasty people. Her own constituents can't stand her. She stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Stanford University certified that six months ago. So yes, she is a demon in the fact that she's like a serial killer. You know, we say Jeffrey Dahmer is a literal demon. We don't mean he's from the pit of hell, but he's a literal, stinking demon. You know, we have famous essays where they were talking about treating the, uh, you know, Irish so bad. They said, why don't we just go ahead and, you know, raise their kids and sell them as, as you know, raw meat. That was satire. So we went into the edge of satire, and I should have been a little bit clearer. But I don't retract the fact that she behaves like the metaphysical, historical demons we read about in history books or the Bible. The truth is, the establishment media is a dying dinosaur. The credibility of the system can never be gotten back because we're run by multinational offshore corporations that brag about it. We're now under foreign treaties we never even ratified. We're going under global government. And so I was right about that and hundreds of other issues. I have credibility, you don't. And I know it upsets you with your big fancy high-rise buildings and all your big titles that people know you've basically, on average, have it out to get them. So Obama, Hillary, the New York Times, all of you, you have chosen your lot. This is who you are. There's still time to try to back out of it and redeem yourselves, but something tells me you're not going to do it. But there is time for other people in the media and the power structure to realize globalism isn't taking us to a good place. And whether you like Alex Jones or hate him, hey, I'm just a regular guy, and I'm trying to get people's attention to cause a debate on these issues. And that's what we cover at InfoWars.com and on my radio show every single day. Earlier this month, we learned that Hillary Clinton's State Department was getting pressure from Barack Obama to do something about Julian Assange and stop any more releases from WikiLeaks. Hillary Clinton responded by proposing a drone strike and the assassination of Julian Assange. And now that we see what kind of information is being released through WikiLeaks, it's no wonder that Hillary Clinton wants him dead because there is enough evidence here to not only end her presidential campaign, but if all of this gets out to the public, she might end up in prison. Leanne McAdoo and Margaret Howell join me now to try to make sense of all this. Where do we begin? I mean, this is all, look at all this information that's coming out right now. Right, and this is, again, just from one person, John Podesta. These are not even the 33,000 These are just the Podesta emails. emails. That's right. right. Darren, there is enough information, and people will just read it and look at it, to put this woman behind bars. This is criminally indictable, the things that she's doing. Just just the Bill Clinton issue alone. Let's just take Bill for a second. We know that uh, the, you know, Cutter, they gave him a $1 million birthday gift. They wanted to present it to him directly. This is in this email. Meanwhile, the New York Times are saying there's no smoking gun among any of this. And, and Cutter Nothing didn't want, they didn't want anything in exchange, yeah, no right? They just, right? It's just out of the kindness of their own hearts, right? right? Exactly. They also want to allocate in the tens of millions money going through the Clinton Foundation into Haiti. We know that she had her hand in all of these pots. She put uh, her husband Bill as the ombudsman to Haiti, if you will, to manage the money. And mm -hmm. this state that uh, jails and persecutes women for rape, uh, that have been raped, the state that hangs homosexuals by the neck, they're donating to the Clintons. Meanwhile, they're spouting to all of us about human rights. Right. And I want to go back to Qatar real quick in Saudi Arabia, because we now know through the emails that Hillary Clinton said herself to John Podesta in, in the email that Saudi Arabia and Qatar, they are arming and funding ISIS. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Wow. That's, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, it's right there. And this is something, of course, InfoWars, we've been saying this for how long? We've been saying this from the very beginning. Now we have concrete proof through the WikiLeaks. Right. I mean, it's really outrageous just the things that we are learning uh, from them. I mean, it's just, it would be surprising to find out what sort of things that we, we don't have access to. Meanwhile, the New York Times, like you said, they're saying this is no big deal. There's no smoking gun. But what they really want people to focus on is Donald Trump and this alleged sex case that came out of nowhere. The women say, oh, well, we were just fed up at the debate. We said enough's enough. We're going to finally speak out about being inappropriately touched by him. And then, of course, Donald Trump said, I'm going to retaliate. Uh, this is libel per se. The New York Times said, come with it. Whatever. This is a public service. America needs to know about this. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, they won't let America know what Hillary Clinton and her State Department and everyone that she's got working for her are doing with this country and what they're setting us up. Well, and this is a smokescreen. And, and of course, these rape allegations about Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. they've been around since he, was in, since he was in college, mm -hmm. okay? All of these, these new allegations that, that Donald Trump was inappropriate with women, that's just since, what, the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah. Perfectly timed with mm -hmm. the presidency. We know that the leaks regarding Donald Trump, uh, per se, were done by GOP insiders wanting to defeat yeah, us. And we know that thing. through, through yeah. fallout. But going back to what Leanne was talking about, and specifically the Saudi Arabia issue and Qatar funding ISIS or Qatar, however you say it, we know that the Clinton Foundation, the Saudis are their num one of their number one donors. What does that say that the Secretary of State has her hand in the pockets of the, of the Saudis? Meanwhile, she knows the Secretary of State. They're funding ISIS and other Wahhabi groups that are radical, that will become radicalized in decades to come, that we're going to be fighting long after she's Secretary of State. She's arming them with one hand, taking money from them with the other, you know, arming the terrorists and taking money. And oh, by the way, so are her BFFs as well. They're right. also arming ISIS. Right. And a lot of people kind of point out, you know, why are we making Russia the enemy when we could be getting oil from them as well? A lot of uh, resources we could be sharing. Why well, Russia's we... a perfect fall guy. Well, yeah, but why are we tying ourselves to Saudi Arabia, they keep saying that they are our number one ally in the region and they are like the number one exporter of terrorism. It's not the oil that we're addicted to. The U.S. is addicted to selling them weapons. And let's not forget about the 28 pages, which is also, it, it's now redacted, by the way, most of it anyway. Mm -hmm. But it proves once and for all that the government of Saudi Arabia helped armed mm -hmm. the, Directly the complicit. hijackers. Directly right. complicit. And we're talking the Saudi royal family and members of the Saudi government. Prince Bandar, the Saudi ambassador to the United States. Yeah, I mean, it, it is outrageous. And something else that I, I found here in the WikiLeaks, Adon Salazar has this article up. It's really been kind of taking the the dark web by storm, if you will. A lot of people are saying that they're uh, in the Podesta email, they were talking about a assassination, making a reference to an assassination just days before Scalia's death. So this was an really? email exchange. Oh, see, I didn't even know about this. Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff to comb through. So we need your help as well. If you guys come across anything, you know, let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is an email exchange between Podesta and D.C. lobbyist Steve Elmendorf. And uh, they said, Podesta says in a February 9th email under the subject line, thanks. He says, didn't think wet works meant pool parties at the vineyard. And of course, wet works is kind of a KGB euphemism for assassination or murder. And Elmendorf replies, I'm all in. Sounds like it will be a bad night. We all need to buckle up and double down. So who knows that they're making a reference to Scalia, but whatever they're making a reference to, why are they talking about wet works in their email and it's going to be a bad murder. night? Murder. So we have uh, funding terrorism. We have taking money from bad actors. We have murder. We have quite a trove here. And what really gets me, Taryn, is the fact that mainstream media anchors and reporters are saying we're not even going to touch this because you know it's illegal so we can't touch it well, a lot of the wikileaks stuff are, you know they are reporting the wikileaks but it seems like none of the damning information a lot right. of it is you know one of it might be i've heard rumors of hillary clinton using the n-word to talk about somebody on her campaign that would be huge mm -hmm. okay she hates evangelicals and catholics we know this we, this we know that right. but but i think this the ties with saudi arabia are much more damning mm -hmm. and i wish they would pay more attention to that and also the fact that she said that she wanted to drone strike julian assange right. that's huge she, it was a joke come on it was just hey. a joke well yeah it might have been a joke, a joke but check it out the people in the state department when she first said it, everybody laughed. And they were like, huh? And then she kept going. She says, well, look, he's a soft target. He's always walking, walking around, around by himself. And then they all kind of said, oh, my God, I think Ooh. she's freaking serious. Yeah, and they followed up with an email for legal and non-legal means yeah. to deal with WikiLeaks. So you're like, what the heck were you guys talking? 
Why are you talking about yeah, non-legal well, means to take out your opponents? Just look at the, uh, one the Clinton thing, kill list. Yeah. One other thing, which I'm pretty sure that uh, New York Times or Washington Post debunked. They gave it a zero uh, kill list, Well, right? it was debunked on... Uh, <sighs> Snopes. Snopes, thank yeah, you. Gotta yeah, got to go to Snopes or go to Hillary Clinton's website where Hillary she Clinton has fact-checked <laughs> all of these. Just but one other thing emails. that's a really kind of key that has come out of these WikiLeaks is the fact that Hillary Clinton admits in these Goldman Sachs speeches that were leaked that she has a private and a public persona. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, obviously, is that in, in private, she supports the Trans-Pacific Partnership. In public, she d denounces it. And so that is kind of a, what's going on. We see with some of her aides talking, and they're working on her script. You know, how can we do this so that privately she can say one thing, publicly she says another, and they kind of give her an out. One of the statements is that we should walk away from the Trans-Pacific Partnership if it doesn't turn out the way we want it. So basically, she's allowing herself to walk away from the TPP after it destroys the economy. Mm -hmm. So she can pub publicly say, "Well, you know, I wasn't for it if it if it you know if it didn't focus on the things that we wanted to happen." Well, Too she's two-faced. She's two-faced, and they admit that there, there's even email exchanges and other WikiLeaks uh, email exchanges where her basically people that are working on her campaign they talk about how she's totally different in the spotlight <laughs> like alex jones for example what you see is what you get he's he's oh, the man. same way off, off camera, camera as he is on. on camera but we know from the numerous people who have worked with hillary like her her hillary clinton her secret uh, service her bodyguards her aides they all say that they yeah. that she treats them horribly she doesn't throw ashtrays at your everyday americans mm -mm. <laughs> going back to this tpp just to frame how this woman lies so the conversation she was having was with her speechwriter she wanted to make sure that they framed that speech in a way that gave the best result for the TPP, <laughs> um, which is strange because you see where her heart is. Where her heart lies is always with the bottom line. The woman has a cash register as a heart, mm -hmm. and it's it's never more present. Craft my speech in a way that's going to make yeah. me look really good. Well, it speaks volumes that she has so many people, sock puppets, all these super PACs, everything working to prop her up. Well, here again, I've said this again and again, I'm gonna, and I'm going to say it again. We know what to expect from Hillary Clinton with right. the Clinton presidency. I mean, well, it's, it's the end of America as we know it. Donald Trump, I say we give him a chance. What do you got to lose, right? And, and before we go, we've got 30 seconds real quick. We've heard rumors about more WikiLeaks to come. What do you expect? Clinton, Chelsea. Chelsea is involved up to her neck in the Clinton Foundation. Like mother, like Money daughter. Money taken out of the for own private. That's what's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, I just want to point out that we've, uh, Leanne and I, we've got all these notes. <laughs> Look at all these notes. Margaret Howell, however, <laughs> it's all up here, right? It's all in there, detailed files. Hey, we're going to take it. Oh, no, that's it for the show. Infowars Nightly News will return tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central. Check us out.